In this lecture, you'll learn about interface groups, which is how in ONTAP we can bundle multiple physical parts together into a single logical interface, and that gives us redundancy and optionally load balancing. You remember that we talked about NIC teaming in the last section, the networking primer. So if you've got just a standard server, like you buy a server from Dell or any other company like that, it's really common thing to do to configure NIC teaming, where you bundle multiple network ports into a single logical interface. The benefit that you get from that is that your server has got a single IP address, which has got redundancy and optionally load balancing. So looking at the example in the diagram here, I've got my server and I've got two physical NIC ports and I bundle those into a logical interface. And then I can put my IP address 10.10.10.10 in the example here onto that logical interface. If I hadn't bundled them together, I could have say 10.10.10.10 on NIC1 and 10.10.10.11 on NIC2. And that would give me some redundancy there, but it would be difficult to configure my clients. They'd have to use two different IP addresses rather than one. That would be awkward. It's much easier to bundle them into the single logical interface and then have my clients reach the server on that single IP address. And when I do this, that IP address can use the two different NICs with the two different uplinks. So that gives me redundancy. If NIC1 fails, for example, then it can still use NIC2. And optionally, I can get load balancing where the traffic is sent through both NICs. So NIC teaming, really common thing to do on your standard servers. We can do the same thing in ONTAP as well, where we bundle multiple physical interfaces into a single logical interface. And the way we do that is with interface groups. Now, with interface groups, the number one thing to remember about them to save getting confused is that all the parts in an interface group must be on the same node. So say we've got part E0C and E0D on node one, we could put that into an interface group. And we've got E0C and E0D on node two, they could go into an interface group as well, but that would be two separate interface groups. We couldn't put parts on both node one and node two into the same interface group. Not possible to do that. A physical part can be a member of only one interface group, and you can have up to eight physical parts in the interface group. So in the examples there, I was using two physical parts, but you could bundle up to eight parts together, which would give you additional bandwidth. So looking at how interface groups are gonna work in ONTAP, in the diagram here, the first example, we're not using interface groups. So I've got the physical part of E0C and it's got IP address 172.23.10.10 on it and E0D with IP address 172.23.10.11. Well, when we bundle E0C and E0D into an interface group, that creates my interface group interface. The naming convention for that is A0A. So, you know, we spoke about the naming convention for the physical parts earlier. If it's an Ethernet part, it begins with the letter E. It will then have a number, which is the slot that the card is in. If it's an onboard part on the motherboard, it's going to be zero. And then we have a letter which indicates that individual part. So we had the physical parts here, E0C and E0D. We bundle them together into the logical interface group. The name for that is A0A. So the first interface group you create on a node will be A0A. The next one would be A0B, then A0C and so on. The A stands for aggregate because we're aggregating our physical parts together. And now we can have a single IP address, which is available on both of those physical parts. And the other benefit that we get from it is obviously the redundancy and optionally the load balancing. So looking at how the redundancy works, this is pretty obvious. I've got ports easier to see and easier to OD again. The IP address 172.23.10.10 is on my interface group of A0A. Well, if port E0D goes down, 
then the IP address is still available on port E0C because it is still up. The physical ports which are members of the same interface group should be on separate network cards for better redundancy. For example, use ports E1A and E2A, which are on two physical cards, rather than E1A and E1B, which are on the same physical card. If we use E1A and E1B and we lose that physical card, then obviously we've lost the interface group. If we used E1A and E2A, which are on two physical cards, we'd need to lose both of those cards before the interface group went down. Now, it is supported that you could use E1A and E1B, but it's best practice use separate physical cards. And hopefully this is pretty obvious. The physical ports should have exactly the same characteristics. For example, don't put one gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet ports into the same interface group. For your interface groups, there's a couple of different ways that you can configure these. You can either have single mode, which is active standby, or multi-mode, which is active active. Single mode interface groups can be used to provide redundancy, but no load balancing when the switches do not support link aggregation. So you remember we covered this in the last section as well. If you had a normal Dell server connected to a couple of switches and those switches did not support a port channel shared going down to the Dell server, then you could still get redundancy by doing active standby. So when you configure active active, it needs to be a matching configuration both on your server side, which is NetApp in this case, and on the switch side as well. So with a normal Dell server, maybe we would want to configure active standby NIC teaming. You never do that in ONTAP though. So the active standby single mode interface groups are supported, but you never ever want to use them. The reason is that we've got another redundancy feature in ONTAP, which is failover groups. We're going to be covering them in a later lecture in this section. And with failover groups, you still get the full bandwidth of all of your interfaces. You don't get that if you configure an active standby interface group. For example, let's say that we've got a couple of 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces and we put them into an active standby single mode interface group. Well, two times 10 gigabit Ethernet, that is 20 gigs worth of bandwidth in total. But if we're using active standby, we're only using one of those interfaces. So we only get 10 gig out of the available 20. Well, if we use failover groups, we can still get the same level of redundancy, but we don't have to cut our bandwidth in half. So single mode interface groups in ONTAP are supported, but never ever used. The other type, which maybe you do want to use is the multi-mode interface groups. Multi-mode interface groups are active-active, so they provide redundancy and load balancing. With your multi-mode interface groups, that does bundle the total aggregate bandwidth of your multiple physical interfaces together. There's two types of multi-mode interface. We can use static 802.3AD or dynamic, which uses LACP. LACP is the newer protocol, so it is preferred. You can use static if the switch supports static, but not LACP. So when we have configured a multi-mode interface group, the ONTAP system is going to be load balancing the traffic that is going out of that logical interface across those multiple physical links. Now, intuitively, you might think that the first packet will go out the first physical link, the second one will go out the second, the third one will go out the third, and so on. And that is supported. You can configure the sequential type, which means that the packets will go out round robin, but it's not actually best practice to do that because it can cause the packets to take different paths, which might have set slightly different latency, and it's possible that the packets could arrive out of order, which can cause problems with some applications. So round robin sequential is supported as a distribution algorithm, but it's not recommended to use that. You want all of the packets from a single flow, meaning from a particular client going to a particular server, to go over the same path. So the possible algorithms that we can use that would work for that are by MAC address, by IP address, or by TCP or UDP port number. 
whichever algorithm you use, just try to choose one which is going to get you an even spread of traffic across all the links in that interface group. So for example, if most of the traffic going out was going to a particular IP address, then probably IP address wouldn't be such a good choice. If those packets that were going out to the same IP address, if some of them were using different port numbers, then we could use the algorithm of by port number, and that would give us a more even spread across all of our links. We don't want to be in a situation where we've got, say, for example, four uplinks, and all the traffic is being load balanced to one of those particular uplinks. We want to get as even a spread as possible. Oh, and another thing to mention while I'm on there is that this load balancing distribution algorithm, it affects the outbound traffic going out from the NetApp system. The traffic that is coming in, that's going to be affected by the load balancing algorithm that you set on the switch. Again, you need to have a matching configuration on both sides. The switch, it controls its traffic going out from itself to the ONTAP system. The ONTAP system, it controls the traffic going out to the switch. So lastly, our supported configurations for interface groups. You see the example here, very common configuration. We have got ports E0C and E0D on node one are added to an interface group. And that interface group is A0A on node one. And then we've done the same thing on node two, E0C and E0D on node two are bundled into an interface group and that creates A0A on node two. We've got IP address 172.23.10.10 on the node one interface group and 172.23.10.11 on the node two interface group. And again, you can see here that the interface group is on a single node. So it's easy to see and easy to do on node one, easy to see and easy to do on node two. We could not have a single interface group with all four ports in there. Your interface group always has to be on the same node. And in the example here, those interface groups are going up to two separate switches. That's a good thing. We want to have them going up to two separate switches for the better redundancy. To be able to do this, those two separate switches need to have a matching configuration. So these need to be advanced switches where you can have a port channel going down from the two different switches. You can see I've got switch one and switch two. I've got that shared port channel going down to node one, and I've also got a separate shared port channel going down to node two. Okay, so that is supported. Another thing that we could do, if the switches do not support a shared port channel going downstream, well, we could bundle our interfaces E0C and E0D into node one and connect them to switch one, and bundle E0C and E0D into a separate interface group and connect that to switch two. Now, at first glance, when you see this, you'll think, oh wait, but that's a bad thing because the switch is now a single point of failure. But remember those failover groups that I mentioned earlier? Well, we can use those to still get redundancy here. So when we use the failover groups in conjunction with our interface groups, now, if A0A on node one goes down, we can fail it over to use the interface group, which is on node two. And I'll explain how the failover groups work in a later lecture. So that both of those configurations are valid on our ONTAP systems. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.